A brand new MMO attempts to portray mental health realistically, and Riot responds to employees reportedly threatening a walkout. All that and more, I'm Ethos, and this is Free to Play Weekly. First off in the news this week, RuneScape might be old, but its newer efforts are raking in the dough. Today, Jagex announced its physical year 2018 financial results, and they're better than a chest full of gold. Revenue for 2018 was 92.8 million pounds, or about 121 million dollars, an increase of 9.3% on a year-over-year -year basis. Jagex attributed the good results to Old School RuneScape's launch on iOS and Android devices, where it was installed on over 5 million devices, as well as the highest ever paid membership numbers for RuneScape. It also marks the fourth successive year of growth for Jagex, which also has added over 100 brand new employees and has increased its investments in research and development by 69%. <laughs> oh god. Overall, revenues for the company have increased by 46.3% since 2015, which isn't too bad for a company that relied on some iteration of the same MMORPG since 2001. Congratulations, Jagex. And moving on, Star Wars The Old Republic is bracing for its brand new expansion later this year, and the developers at Bioware are shifting into high gear to get it done. There's a lot coming in this expansion, including two brand new planets and changes to advanced classes, and Bioware's commitment to keeping players informed on how those things are coming along. To that end, community coordinator Daniel Steed has started a form thread detailing the articles that he wishes to publish up to the launch of the expansion. Already on the list is the expansion's announcement, with major topics for May including the introduction of Dantooine, the reoccurring pirate excursion in-game event, and other events on deck for May. In broader detail, he also mentioned the other topics on deck, which include the aforementioned planets and class revamps, as well as a brand new species, the story behind the expansion, and the developer's overall philosophy regarding loot acquisition in this expansion. As typical, Steed offers the disclaimer that nothing is 100% set in stone, or carbonite, but you can expect more details very soon if you visit the Star Wars The Old Republic forums. So it looks like later this month, a new free-to-play shooter named Splitgate Arena Warfare will make its way to Steam. The game will officially launch on May 22nd, following the beta that happened this past weekend. The sci-fi shooter seems to be inspired by player-controlled portals similar to Portal, and a combat system very similar to New Halo. The game was also designed with classic shooters as a model, giving players this sort of arena play with a twist. You can learn more about Splitgate Arena Warfare by checking out its Steam page. Destiny Sword, a new squad-based strategy MMO created by the independent Canadian developer named Two Dog Games, expires to be more than just your standard game. While it features mechanics any player of that genre will be familiar with, it also focuses heavily on character psychological and mental health. In fact, to create this game, the developers have teamed up with several organizations that have helped guide its development. Some of these you may be familiar with, others that you may not. Take This was one organization on the team. Also involved was Alda Communications, an organization created by MASH actor Alan Alda that helps scientists and people in more technical fields learn how to communicate their ideas with those unfamiliar with those fields. A third organization involved is Spartan Wellness, a network of veterans, physicians, and specialists dedicated to a wellness resource for Canadian veterans. The sci-fi game features a story of space exploration relying on a rare and depleting mineral. Companies compete to get their hands on the mineral in question and eventually end up fighting over a lone world still rich with it. Players command squadrons in the fight for the mineral, but must do more than just figure out strats and watch HP bars. Instead, they will need to focus on social progress and assure the mental health of their characters. As this is a war, the game focuses on issues that affect veterans such as PTSD, depression, anxiety, and addiction. Those interested in finding out more about Destiny's Sword can check out its main site or its Steam page. Now, it's still in closed beta at this moment, so it'll be a little bit of time before everyone can try it out. We have about a year to go before open beta hits. And finally, it seems that Riot Game continues to have less than a stellar time when it comes to employee relations, at least as recent reports from both PC Gamer and Waypoint are anything to go by. Since Kotaku broke the story of sexism and harassment perpetrated by some of Riot's higher-ups last year, the company has been dealing with a load of fallout. Among things they've done to address these is hire a chief diversity officer and suspend COO Scott Gelb without pay for two months and require him to undergo training. As it turns out, these actions have not been satisfactory for some of Riot's employees. For one thing, some take issue with the fact that Gelb is still employed at Riot at all. The result of these issues, as well as the belief that the company is still not being transparent with its employees, reports are now surfacing that at least some of the Riot staff have been planning on a walkout. 
Now, according to two employees who spoke to Waypoint, not only are some employees involved in planning the walkout, but a large portion of other employees may support it. This prompted a response from Riot's chief diversity officer, who sent a message to Riot staffers via Slack addressing the walkout and promising a chance for employees to have their voice heard via small group sessions taking place over the past couple of weeks. Now, Riot also wants to take a moment to correct the record to point out that Riot has not blocked any legal action with some of these stories that have been reported. They did ask for a change in venue for the next stages of the suits, but the suits that they've apparently let out themselves are still ongoing. They've pointed out that the closed door meetings aren't in fact closed door, and that they're open to not only all US Riot employees, but to all Riot employees from around the globe, even if arbitration wouldn't apply to them. Now, going into a little bit of the legal aspect and the general arbitration of the company, we did get a response from Riot Games when we requested a comment. And they said, while we won't discuss details on ongoing litigation, we look forward to resolving all matters through the appropriate processes. Our commitment to building and sustaining a world-class inclusive culture at Riot is unchanging and we value everyone who has come forward to help us become a better company. We have acknowledged that there are improvements we can make to make our culture and community. We have been evaluating all the procedures and policies, including those related to arbitration. And as we move forward, we will not hesitate to implement changes once we have thoroughly assessed that these changes move us in the right direction for Riot and Rioters. And that moves us to our question of the week. Speaking about the previous brand new MMO, Destiny's Sword, portraying mental health, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below of your thoughts about an MMO really tackling mental health, and does that actually pull your interest to actually trying this game out, or does it kind of make you indifferent? Let me know in the comments section below. And that's it for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name is Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later.